Hello, I am Gepwin, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. This will be the first episode of my new series, The Kerbal Green Initiative. It took me more than one take to say that. I'm embarrassed, embarrassed to admit how badly my talking works sometimes. Anyway, I wanted to go through. We are starting a completely new game. We're going to be playing on full-on career. We have our Gepwin flag. Of course, we have our Gepwin flag. If anyone would like to play with the Gepwin flag, let me know. I'll make it available. Uh... Plan name. We're going to call this the uh, the green thingy because you can't spell initiative. Let's call it the green green play. Why not? Yay! And I've been debating this. I think I'm going to start on normal because I have yet to actually complete a full-on career playthrough, and we're playing with some complicated mods and things, so it's going to make it even more weird. So we're we're definitely not going to. Uh, purchase research. Uh, I'm gonna turn off higher crew members and I don't know about missing crew members respawn. Correct me if somebody correct me if I'm wrong but I think that's only like like uh, Jebediah and people who I'm planning on not using. Definitely allowing quick loading and definitely letting reverting flights because I'm not that good at this game. So that's what we're gonna be starting with. We will accept and Let's start. Let's go on. Now yeah, use um use our tech tree. Uh oh, I want KSP interstellar tree. There we go. Load. <laughs> Here we are at the new new space center, which I've never seen before in my life. We've got some weird looking buildings, little tent things. I don't want to upgrade yet because I actually. Could, but don't want to upgrade yet. So what we're going to be doing... Yeah, I got it. Thank you. We're going to be going for some... Actually, yeah, we need to go to the... To the center. To the... Is that the astronaut trade complex? Where's our... Alright, there's our basic rocketry. Which we can't unlock yet. Because we don't have any science. We need five science. Anyway, we need to find our management building. There we go. So we're going to take launch a new vessel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take set an altitude record. And we're not going to take these two because if you saw Scott Manley's thing, which I'm going to be basing the first part of this game off of, um, there's a lot of altitude records that you can set before these. And that's what you want to do. So I'm going to go through and set a bunch of altitude records, build up some cash and reputation and some science as well as, um, let's hire this guy. I need to hire a couple of Kerbals. Because I want to try to avoid using our main three. This guy is a scient... What is he? He's a scientist. They're all scientists. I need a pilot. So we've got a scientist and a pilot. I'll need an engineer later. But uh, I want to try to avoid using the main three just for a bit. I might use Jebediah for something. But if I use any of these three and they get lost, this is a big, you know, you have to go get them. You just have to. Anyway, I'm going to build a pretty basic rocket that we're going to be using for a little while. And I have yet to check. I am using... Ah, yes, so there's some rules and things to this I'll go through in a minute. But I'm using uh, real shoots and I want to see... Okay, good. Real shoots is only giving me access to these. So I'm going to be using real shoots. I am also using KSP Interstellar, which I do not believe has any parts that start out uh, unlocked. Oh, there are a few. I was wrong. Lithium tank, uh, uranium tanks, etc., and water storage tanks. All right. Now I'm going to tell you straight off. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing with Interstellar. So someone is uh, may have to help me out in the comments. Uh, give me some advice when I'm going for things. Anyway, so you will notice that I'm using uh, liquid fuel instead of the solid fuel. That is because we are going green. And going green means I'm limited in the things that I can use, sort of. Uh, I'm not setting any strict limits on like not being able to use fuel because that's pretty much impossible playing career mode. But I am setting some limits. This is huge. Don't want to use that. I am setting some limits, uh, for example, I'm gonna add 
these onto the side so that I can get extra parachutes on and save our our capsule. Come on. Come on, attach. What's up? I know you want to attach. Fine, do I have to use a normal parachute for that? Or do I not attach like that anymore? Hmm. I guess they won't attach to these now? Ah, there we go. I'm not used to the new system. <laughs> there we go. So like I said, I'm using real shoots, I'm using Interstellar, I'm using something called the Flight Manager for something, something, something. That, it's going to be in the description. It's a long name. Basically, it lets me manage my stages so that I can fly more complicated missions. Uh, I showed it off in the negative one episode. And there's another one that I'm using that I can't remember right now. What was it? What was it, Brain? Do something. My notepad is not next to me. There's going to be stuff in the description. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, embarrassed now. Now embarrassed. Ah, procedural fairings, because I'm just a fan of those. They have no real relevance. And I also added the Kerbal Alarm Clock so that we can uh, use more than one mission at once. That's the only thing that I've added since episode negative one. So if you look at episode negative one, it's got the full mod list except for Kerbal Alarm Clock, and I will be copying that into the description of this episode and probably every other. So you can take a look in the description and see the mods we will be using. Anyway, this should be enough to get us up to the five something 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 5,000 this should be well more than enough to get us up to 5,000 I don't want to go above 5,000 we're going to make sure that we have the proper crew because I do not want to to die we're gonna send up our pilot get him some experience points Lodzar Lodzor good name good name good Kerbal all right we're ready to go uh, I'm gonna do a bit of this first launch talk about the rules we've got and uh, then probably uh, time accelerate through the rest of it for you with some post commentary. So get ready for the launch. We can turn on SAS because we've got a pilot. That should work out fine. And I just want to make sure that we don't go above 5,000 meters, much above 5,000 meters. And that should work out okay. We've got, oh, I should have emptied the monopropellant. So anyway, the, the point of this series is that we want to go green. Using Interstellar, we are going to basically, you know, try to come more or less straight down. Using Interstellar, we're going to try to go away from using traditional rocket fuel because we want to go green. We want to uh, we want to make sure that we're we're doing the right thing for the planet and our curval environment, and we. We think that the rocket fuel may be putting too much, you know, pollutants and junk into our atmosphere. So we want to want to make sure that we are going to save it for future generations of uh, Kerbals. Okay, come on, don't fall too fast. Don't fall too fast. I still want to get above 5,000. I just want to make sure I don't go too far above. Because I can't remember what our next... Our next thing is all right. Should be there. We are. We're at five thousand now. Then let's collect a uh, crew report. Crew report, and we'll send that. Uh, oh dang it! I didn't put on the comms device. All right. Well, let's take a crew report. Crew report and store. There we go. So the rules for this are: we have to keep pushing towards green technology using less and less traditional rocket fuel. The only steadfast rule that I'm going to try to stick to is no solid fuel. This is uh, something that I know it doesn't have that much to do with things, but it was suggested by uh, Caster Quinn in my last video. It sounds like a good idea. It sounds fun and interesting. And we're going to say that stuff's toxic. All right, I don't know if it is. But we're going to say it is. So no solid fuel, which is why I'm using liquid fuel here when a booster would be cheaper and better for these initial launches. No solid fuel. We are going to see. I'm going to try to include cybertrons in that. But we are going to see if... Um, oh, slow down faster. Come on, not used to these real shoots. Not used to those at all. We're going to try to include cybertrons in that, but I will always err on the side of making things more entertaining. So if the cybertrons are really um, making it impossible for me to fly things, then we might just include those. Same goes for monopropellant. I looked up uh, monopropellant 
is a bunch of different things that can be, but the, the gist is it's probably very toxic. But since there's no real alternative we can switch to, I'm going to be using monopropellant as well. The only other things are, one, we have to try to make our spaceships look pretty. This one was kind of an exception to that, because I wanted a couple more parachutes. So not as pretty as it could be, unfortunately. And uh, we also are not going to be doing like weird science scumming. We're going to be taking science as we would. We're not going to really do the like, ah, oh, we're going down this part of the tech tree because that's how you unlock the most science things and have to unlock more science things. Ah, perfect landing. Have to unlock so many more science things, otherwise can't, uh, oh, it's a no, whatever. Just go down to the ground so we can get a surface sample and crew report. Get some more science. EVA report. Store. Thank you. We'll recover you and then we'll recover the vessel. We've completed our things. So we're just going to uh, take the science as it comes. Untitled spacecraft. Recover. There we go. Take the science as it comes more so than anything. <laughs> Returned a lot of funds. Excellent. Need to try to keep track of that. So. Like I said, we're going to, so we'll research this because it's the first one. First thing we can research. What's going on? Why can't I, uh... Why, why won't it let me research that? Requires start, which I've got. It doesn't, doesn't appear to have let me... Come on, owned, owned, owned. Where's the last of our... Where's the rest of our tech tree? Gonna have to see what's going on. That, uh, that could be a problem. Ah, there we go. So what else can we get? We have 11 science and we can't unlock anything else. But I'm gonna try to unlock all of these. I'm gonna start with survivability so we can get landing gear and some more parachutes. But I wanna unlock this row and then the next column. Unlock this column, next column, etc, etc. Not just, ah, I can get more science if I go down this way and boo ba 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 etc. So that's how we're going to be playing. Uh, that was the first launch. Now I'm going to switch over to a little bit of post commentary and uh, finish up a few more of these uh, these altitude record contracts. Well, joining you back in post commentary land as we pick up the altitude record of 1,100 meters. Uh, we also will pick up. I can't remember if I put it in the editing, but we're also going to pick up the test separatrons landed at Kerbin. Now we had to do a bit of a rocket redesign because after our first launch we of course unlocked a little bit of parts in the science lab as you just saw I think because I recorded the live commentary to this like days and days ago and I can't remember what the what the heck I did. Anyway we launched a very similar craft we just added a bit more fuel to make sure we can get up wherever we want. We explode those because that's just so cool. Those things just fly off when they're not attached to anything. And now of course we will easily set our 1100 meter altitude test. So the reason that I'm speeding through all of this is because I decided, as I said, I decided to not do uh, the altitude thing because it's pretty easy. It is pretty easy to get into orbit on your first launch with some stock, with a few stock parts. First couple launches, it's pretty easy to get to orbit if you've played the game before. And as bad as I am with the game, I'm reasonably certain that I could build something that could at least break the atmosphere on the first launch. But, of course, when you do that, you lose out on a bunch of science and a bunch of funds that you could get while achieving all these different altitude records. So that is uh, basically what we're doing. We're going through, we're collecting a bunch of science, we're collecting a bunch of funds, picking up survivability for those side parachutes, and then picking up the uh, 2200 meter and now a major redesign of the spacecraft because we got the side-mounted parachutes. We no longer need those stupid antenna thingies, and uh, dev and uh, different fuel tanks. Now I was debating for a bit whether to make this a two-stage or one-stage rocket. I decided to make it a two-stage because it would be easier to transition to stuff further on. But I think that may have been a mistake because I went through my funds a lot. Like I I started going through my funds. Good deal. I figured since I have the um, since I have the stage management system 
that lets me recover stages as long as they have real shoots or control points attached. I thought that having a multi-stage rocket would be a better idea because I can recover the other stages, but I don't think it was getting me back enough funds. And I have never actually played through an entire career mode before with funds and science and reputation and all of that. I've, I've dabbled in it. I've never played through most of the game that way. So funds are new to me. I'm going to have to concentrate a lot on managing the things. I've never used upgradable buildings. So this is going to be interesting to say the least. Now, of course, second launch goes off without a hitch because these are fairly easy launches. I use landing legs just to make sure I don't destroy too much and collect all the science I can. Uh, I skipped a lot of the science building stuff because that is really boring in video, but I'm basically unlocking the science in in uh, column order, as I was saying before. We're just getting one column, the next column, the next column. I believe I only was able to unlock the first column with the research I got. Now, the last launch, I decided to veer to the um, west, east, one of those directions. I decided to veer towards the mountains so that I could get some different biome data. In this launch, I am hoping this is the one where I go toward the ocean so that I can get ocean data. I believe it might be. Anyway, setting the uh, 330, the 3300, that is the third, 3300 altitude record, once again, very easy. Uh, using exactly the same rocket that I had last time, actually, except I added a couple more parachutes to the bottom stage because that actually broke a bit. So splash down in the ocean so we can collect all the ocean data. And you may have noticed that we're using different Kerbals every time to get the experience up. This time I accidentally used Jebediah. Uh, unfortunate accident. I did add some fins because I thought they were fun. I just unlocked these things and I wanted to use them. Thought they would make the steering easier, but it did not actually. Uh, the fins destabilized the rocket somehow, I'm still not sure why, and made it much more difficult to control. So I learned not to put fins on things from this launch. Oh well. I also added a little more fuel just to make sure that I could reach my new altitude record. And I thought that uh, 56,000 might the 5600 might count as being above the atmosphere, but unfortunately it was not quite. So we're going to have to wait till the next launch to actually reach space. Reaching space. Now, uh, unfortunately I actually forgot to include too many shots of the exterior, but we are... We have been hovering somewhere around 20... Mm, I forget if it's a thousand or a million. Uh, might be a thousand. Twenty-something with zeros behind it funds which is, uh, basically we've been hovering just under the amount of speed. Oh yes, this, this one broke. This splashed down and broke, so it, I was able to swim Jebediah out. Brave Jebediah swims out, collects all the data from those two uh, goo pods, but it was very boring. So just believe that Jebediah went out and collected the science from the goo capsules. Now we add a few more parachutes to block the door. And uh, just to make sure, with our extra fuel, the thing was a little bit too heavy. That's why the splashdown broke it. Uh, though, with the landing gear, I don't think the extra parachutes were exactly necessary because, uh, we honestly, if I landed on the land, the landing gear should be able to buffer that. I, my really only problem was that I didn't didn't land on the land. I should not have splashed it down. Now is the problem. Now this is the rocket that I'm hoping to bring to orbit, which is why I am redesigning the thing so heavily. Now this is uh, kind of fascinating to me because it is actually the first time I hit the problem with the part and weight limits, which are actually tooled surprisingly well because uh, I hit the part limit and the weight limit at the same time, and once I got under the part limit I didn't really have to worry about the weight limit very much. So it's very, very good balance on the part of the squad team, but this is a very heavy redesign of the rocket to give it multiple stages and much more fuel and a little more oomph and hopefully get the thing into orbit. After much redesigning and tweaking around, I wind up with this, which I'm hoping will be enough to get me into space and eventually orbit with the extra fuel on the sides, extra fuel on the top, extra fuel in the middle, just extra fuel everywhere, blah, 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 but lots of stages. Now, as this is a pretty long launch, even at four times speed, uh, given that it is a orbital attempt, 
I'm going to talk about how worried I am about continuing this game. Uh, honestly, I've never played with Interstellar before, which is being complicated, and I haven't even hit that yet. I have never played career mode before, and I'm pretty sure I messed up these first launches. Because uh, I did not have enough money to upgrade the vertical assembly building at all. And I'm pretty sure you start with enough money to upgrade the vertical assembly building, which means I lost money uh, on all these launches. I went through all this to gain more funds and reputation, and I lost money. Now, I did forget that I should, that I, since I got a lot of reputation off of safer returning so many launches, I can, in fact, uh, do a fundraising campaign and hopefully get some more. So I'm going to give that a go, see how much that actually gets me, if it's worth it, what I can really do, and see how the funds go. Because my problem right now with contracts is I am so bad at the game that I cannot do any of the test in flight contracts. You know, all of the test of parachute at this height going this fast into exactly these parameters, I've never been able to accomplish any of those. Uh, it takes me many, many, many launches to try. Uh, I wind up having to cancel the contract, which is really bad, and uh, it just doesn't work out for me. So we've gotten up to space, but unfortunately we had just barely not enough fuel to get to a full orbit. So we're just going to have to wait and go around. But we do get some more scientific data, and uh, he, we almost do a full rotation of the planet, which is unfortunate. Because I really did want to get to orbit here, but we're going to get a different biome when we land, which I was planning on anyway, but still pretty nice. Now, as I was saying while uh, we were failing to reach orbit here, I'm going to see how we progress money-wise in the next episode. And if absolutely necessary, I will find some better guides or take some of the advice I'm sure you guys are going to give me on more efficient uses of my money in the early game and probably uh, redo some of these. But if I do that, it's going to be off camera and I'm going to give a very brief, brief, brief synopsis of what happened. And of course, loving the real shoots because I accidentally went too far and brought the rocket over on its side again. But we've landed next to the Oasis. Uh, this will be the end of our adventures today. Hopefully, as I said, we should be able to to uh, carry on, but if not, I will redo some of these launches and give you a very brief synopsis at the beginning of the next episode. I'm sorry not much happened today, but that's going to happen with career mode, and I will not make you watch this many boring launches again for some time, hopefully. Next episode, my goal is to uh, continue with contracts and eventually make it to the moon. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed the first episode of Kerbal Green Initiative, uh, since nothing much happened I hope it was not too boring for you. I am Gepwin. I very much hope you've enjoyed. If you did, you can leave a like. If you really enjoyed and want to see more, you can subscribe. Thank you for all your support. I very much hope that you've liked the video, and I will see you soon.